Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to be here together. I encourage you as you come in, um, find yourself a seat. Opportunity for us to meet together um, in this place um, to worship God. Today is the first day that uh, our new congregation is meeting weekly at the Beacon Centre. And um, I thought this morning as we, um, as we gather here, um, just to take a moment, just to pray for them um, as, they, as they start. They've been meeting for a year, but as they start to meet weekly, that they would know, they would know God's presence. And God's presence would um, go from that place into those communities and people would be impacted um, by God's love. So let's pray together for a moment. God, I thank you that you are always with us. God, thank you uh, for calling us at this time to um, begin this congregation weekly at the Beacon Centre. I pray that for those that gather there, that they would know God's blessing, they would know God's presence, that God, that they would be encouraged this morning. And God, we pray that your gospel, your love will reach far into those communities around that building. God, I pray as we gather together today, as we come to worship you, as we come to encounter you, that God, we would know your presence with us. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we uh, worship together, the start of our celebration, I encourage you to um, be, not to be limited in the way that you worship. We'll have songs that we'll sing together. I encourage you to sing these words, words that will praise God, words that will give him um, worship, show him, um, tell him what we think about him. As we sing our songs, I encourage you, you might um, use flags in worship. You might raise your hands. You might clap along as part of your worship, as part of our whole bodies worshiping God together. There may be actions that you do to um, songs as we worship God. These songs have been written so that we can worship, so that we can praise, so we can think about. We may be reminded. We declare who God is and what he has done and what he continues to do for each one of us. Let's stand together as we worship. If you're able, please stand and we will sing. We will worship God. We will praise God. During our first song, um, the offering will come forward. Thank you. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory and name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. King of love and grace, my guardian, all my hopes and fears are in your hands. I'm in your hands. Where you go, I'll go. Show me the way. Every step I take, be now my God. God on my side. You go before me, you're there beside me, and if I wander, love will find me. Goodness and mercy will always follow, you go Trust and obey. I will walk by faith and not by sight. God of my life, let Your kingdom come, Your will be done. All Your promises will stand forever. You're my defender. You go before. You're there beside me, and if I wander, love will find me. Goodness and mercy will always follow. You go before me, my guardian. You are God. Our great defender, strong in love, forever faithful. We are yours, and we will trust in you. You are God, our great defender, strong in love, forever faithful. We are yours, and we will trust in you. You go. You're there beside me, and if I wander, love will find me. Goodness and mercy will always follow. You go before me, my guardian, my guardian. When, um, when I told Joe I was, um, I was leading, he said, um, do you get to choose the songs? And I went, oh, yeah. we went, hmm, we haven't played God Suit in a very long time, have we? <laughs> I know you're with me every step I take 
Amen. A little bit later for those of you who stay in this room where we think what it means. What does it mean to have our God suit on and standing firm? But that's for a few minutes time. Uh, Family news. uh, Opportunity just to share one or two things that are happening. Things to highlight. Things to be aware of. Um, We regularly each week send out an email with all our updates. Um, If you receive that, then you'll know everything that's going on. Oh, no, if you receive it and read it, then you'll know everything that's going on. Um, If you don't receive that, uh, then please um, speak to us and we will make sure we add you to the mailing list um, so that you know what's going on across um, all the different areas of church life. This morning is like the beginning of the year in some ways. It's not January. But for lots of people involved in school, or if you have children in school, um, then in lots of ways it feels like the beginning of a new year. And for us as a church, it always feels like that, having um, less going on over the summer, and then we're back um, ready for September and everything starts again. So this morning, our children and young people group start again, so um, don't leave yet. Just make sure we say that. So we have our baby room um, for babies, um, but babies, please take an adult with you. Don't go on your own. Uh, Little stars, um, if you are aged around two or up to reception, you're very welcome because you are a little star. Uh, Kids Kingdom, for those in year one to year six, thinking what it means to be part of God's kingdom and what that means. And furnace. Wow. And Furness, for those in school year 7 to 10, um, also will be um, going out. But don't leave yet. No more whooping. Well, whoop away. If you are involved in 
um, hosting or leading or helping with any of those four groups, could you please stand up? I'm not going to make you do anything else. I'm just asking you to stand up. Some of you are looking very worried. That's Baby Room, Little Stars, Kicks Kingdom, or Furnace. Opportunity just for us. Look, one or two more people creeping up now. Opportunity for us just to pray for these people, okay? Um, but also, stay standing. It won't be more than about 30 seconds. Um, next slide, please. Also this week, um, we have other weekly groups that are starting again that haven't um, been running over the summer. So our Friday night youth club, uh, little foot group, our Tuesday treat group, Thursday drop in, our stay and play. Um, if you're part of those groups, could you please lead in those groups? Could you please stand up or put your hand up? Or both hands up, well done, Paul. And for those, and for those who can't see, Karen has stood up uh, with her wheelchair. But that's for later. These groups are um, important. There are ways that we connect with people, the way that we teach people. Um, and these leaders um, commit, lots of us commit lots of time, but these leaders commit to helping out with those groups and activities. And um, part of our responsibility is making sure that they are safe. And we do that with our safeguarding. Um, but it's important for any of us, with any, any time, if any of us are worried or concerned, um, for us to raise those concerns. But right now, just going to spend a moment praying for these people. Let's pray together. If you are um, a child or young person, maybe look at one of your leaders and pray for them as I pray. You can even point at them if you'd like to at this occasion. Let's pray. God, I thank you for um, all that goes on as part of uh, God Manchester Baptist Church. Pray for this morning for those in this building as um, children and young people go to their groups. Pray for the leaders who commit to that. Pray that you'd inspire them. Pray that you will help them um, as they lead today. For those who meet midweek and um, connect with people in so many different ways, I pray that we would bring something of the love and the care of God um, into their lives. Help us to represent you in all that we do in these roles. Amen. Amen. Please sit yourselves down, put your hands down. Now, children, young people, wait. It's nearly time for you to go to your groups. If you are changing groups, if you, are, uh, you used to be in reception but you're in year one, that means you're now heading upstairs. If you used to be in year six but now you're in year seven, that means you are moving to furnace. Um, and other things will happen as well. But basically, if you are in school year 10 or below... Then in a moment, you go that way. Someone will be there to help point you in the right direction. If you're visiting us, um, people again will show you where to go and make sure you find the right group for you. But before they go, I want an opportunity to pray for them as well. So now it's your turn to stand up. So if you're a child or young person and able to stand up, that would be great. Come on, Furnace. Up you get. Maybe... Maybe in this moment, God would lay one of these on your heart. Um, I'm not encouraging you to point at them. Um, but perhaps in your heart, pray for one of these that stands. Someone you know, or perhaps just a face. But let's pray together. God, thank you for these uh, children and young people. God, I pray that today, um, that you would bless them, that you would be with them, that you would reveal yourself to them, that in their groups they would um, in, be impacted by your love and your care. Pray this in your powerful name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you are in Kids' Kingdom or Furnace or the Baby Room or Little Stars or a leader, head that way. And everyone else that stays in this room, um, why not find someone to talk to for a moment? Thank you very much.
encourage you to bring those conversations to a close. You can pick them up at the end. We often talk about the, um, how important it is to have opportunity to share uh, testimony with one, one another, to share those things that God is doing in our lives. Each Sunday um, from now on at three o'clock um, on our YouTube channel, um, you will have opportunity to meet um, someone from GBC. Um, they've been pre-recorded and just a way of us starting to find out about other people. And um, part of that um, is, is testimony. As you'll hear, uh, we recorded the first five or six. And as you hear from those people, you'll hear um, testimony of um, God working. You'll hear testimony of what God says. I'm not going to tell you too much yet because you need to watch them. But each week, uh, we will ask, ask people who they are, um, ask them how long they've been here at uh, GBC, uh, ask them something that we don't know about them. There's some amazing things you'll find out about people. And um, then also, um, what's their, who's their favorite character um, in the Bible? Who's the person um, who is their favorite character? wonder what you would answer to that, because I might be asking you. I wonder what you would answer to that. Who is your favorite character in the Bible? For those of you who look today, um, you will get double dose because I'm going to tell you mine. Um, but you'll see it today as I'm the first person interviewing myself. But don't worry about that. Um, but the characters, characters for me that stand out regularly, or I regularly go back to, um, is uh, Daniel's friends. And as lots of you know, I do a lot of work with young people. And they often say, is that because you don't have any? But that isn't the reason that they stand out to me. Daniel's friends um, are in a situation where they're told not to worship God. And they um, continue to worship him. And they're standing in front of the king and they're about um, to be put into a blazing furnace. Um, and that's very hot. It's very likely as they stood there with the king, they would have been able to feel the heat of the furnace. And the king says, are you, you, know, you going to stop? And they say... Something which is incredibly powerful. They say God is able to save us. And there's a lot of faith in that. We may have been in situations ourselves where we, we've said that. We've had the faith to be able to say in this situation where everything seems impossible, God is able to save me. But what they go on to say is um, just doubles down on that faith, if you like. That even if God doesn't, we will continue to worship him. We will continue to praise him. We will continue um, to declare his goodness. Now, that makes the king very angry. Quite a lot of um, talk back within that. A lot of, um, I suppose we might say, sass in what they were doing. But they weren't. They were talking from their heart. And for us, as we, um, as we live our Christian life, for some of us, as we've lived our Christian life for many years, for others, it may be a really fresh and new um, uh, faith that as we think about, um, in this case, those three friends, think about what they said, think about what, 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 what did they mean? Why were they saying it? I want you to imagine for a moment that they were able to come here and share testimony. And they'll share testimony and they'll share how powerful it was that, um, for those who don't know the story, they're thrown into the furnace, um, but they're not burned up. And they come out, um, and the Bible says, not even smelling of smoke. God saves them. But as they talk, I imagine that they wouldn't just talk about the fact of how amazing that was, but they would want to keep continuing to point people back to God. So this week, this week as you are living your life, I encourage you to think about um, the times, the opportunities you have to point people back to God. The opportunities you have to speak out for God, to speak um, powerfully about who God is and what God does. I encourage you to think about what maybe would be your testimony if next week you had opportunity to share. Opportunity to share what God has done in your life. Maybe for you at the moment, it feels like, I don't know, I don't know if I would have anything. I encourage you to listen to what I've got to say in a few minutes' time. It won't fix everything, but we're going to come to that a little bit later. 
Let's spend uh, a few moments um, in prayer together. And as we pray, this is an opportunity for you just to sit and um, listen for a moment. It's an opportunity for you, um, your prayers, maybe just under your breath, maybe just within your own mind. But you come before God as we pray. God, thank you for all that you give to each one of us. Thank you that you are with us. God, thank you that you love us. God, I thank you that in the midst of whatever life might um, bring our way, the day-to-day, the good, the not-so-good, God, I thank you that you are still God. I pray that for each one of us, that our belief, our faith, isn't based on you just doing the things we want, but it's because you are real, that you are alive. God, we pray for those who are part of our church, those um, who are our friends, our family, who at this time, this time need a, um, a touch from you. For those who are physically not well, awaiting appointments, waiting diagnosis. God, we pray that you will bring a peace, that you will protect them, that you'll bring a comfort to them. Pray that appointments happen quickly, treatments happen. God, we pray for your healing to be upon people. For those who at this time, life feels overwhelming. Life feels tough, feels too much going on. Pray that you again will bring a calm to those people, that you'll bring a peace, that within their mind, that they would know that you are the Lord of all. God, we want to give you thanks for the blessings um, that you give to each one of us. Lord, this morning, may we, may we know, may we be reminded, may they come back to mind. God, for the houses that we have, for the food that we have, for the security that we have. God, I pray that we would continue to have thankful hearts. That no matter where we find ourselves, how we find life, that God, we would continue to thank you for all of it. Amen. Amen. Going to continue um, with our, um, in worship, and um, as we uh, worship together. Um, it's an opportunity for us to, um, as we know, praise God, bring our worship to God. Um, and also, um, there are times where God will speak to us. And in our worship, um, it's not just doing the next part of our celebration, but it's an opportunity for us to um, encounter God and for God to come and meet with us. I encourage you, if you feel God um, laid a prayer on your heart, um, try not to worry if the microphone gets to you, but just bring that prayer to God um, during our time, during those times of quiet um, as they happen. If you feel God has laid a particular word on your heart, I encourage you to speak to Carolyn or myself and um, for us to weigh if that's appropriate um, for today to bring um, to this place. But let's be expectant as we meet with God, knowing that God wants to meet with us and speak to us. If you're able, encourage you to stand. Let's worship. Promise. 
his keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle worker. you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel that you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, Christ is my firm foundation 
The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause he's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why would he fail now? He won't He won't I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense So I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful in every season He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail.
thousand times I've failed, still your mercy remains. And should I stumble again, for I am caught in your grace, everlasting. Your light will shine when all else fades, never ending. Your glory goes beyond all fame. purpose remains the art of losing myself in bringing you praise everlasting your light will shine when all else fades never ending your glory goes beyond all things in my heart and my soul lord i give you control Consume me from the inside out, Lord. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. Everlasting, your light will shine when all else fades. Never ending, your glory goes beyond all fame and the cross. heart and my soul Lord I give you control consume me from the inside out Lord let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out Let's just remain quiet for a moment. Let's just.
Amen. Praise God. Mandy's going to come and bring our readings um, this morning. Thank you very much. The first reading is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. The wise and foolish builders. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Then Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock, in whom I take refuge my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Ephesians 6 verse 13, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Thank you very much. In the summer, I had uh, the privilege of being away uh, with a group of young people from here at Dreaming the Impossible at um, Stafford Showground. And the theme of um, the summer festival was Stand Firm. And it was, it was so good, really good week. Um, and it was a theme which really um, encapsulated the young people wasn't just a command that was given um, in the context of... Um, this is working. Sorry. It wasn't just a command given in the context of um, you need to stand firm. But it was a, what they talked about regularly from um, the main um, stage was how are you going to do this? What's going to help you do this? What's going to enable you to stand firm in your faith each and every day? While I was um, at Dreaming the Impossible, um, I thought to myself, I wonder if when Jesus um, delivered the Sermon on the Mount, it was a bit like a summer festival. He gathered a group of people and they had a whole like, few days together where they did lots and lots of... That's not Jesus, by the way. <laughs> um, had lots and lots of teaching. This is taken from the summer um, when we were away together. Um, but an opportunity to come... And the first reading that was read to us is part of that Sermon on the Mount. It's right at the end where Jesus has been doing all this teaching and he gives this parable. I wonder what we would have felt like if we were there at that festival. I wonder how we would have engaged with it. I wonder what it might have said. Now the Bible verses from Matthew perhaps are really well known. The story about building a house on the rock story about building a house on the sands. Might be that for you, as you hear it, you start to sing a song about it. I'm not going to sing a song. Might be that you think you know it inside out. It's a really well-known known verse. As we think about these two builders, builders who perhaps, as I say, you might feel as if you know really, really well. I wonder which one you feel most like today. You see, as these two builders that Jesus talks about come together, they start in the same place. They start with the same resources. But what happens next is slightly different. We have Builder 1. Builder 1 decides to build a house. Says, yes, I'm going to build a house. And then listens to what's said. They both listen to the words of Jesus. So he listens to what's said and hears the words of what Jesus is saying. And then Builder 1 
forgets it, doesn't worry about it, puts it to one side, ignores it maybe, and then just gets on and builds their house quick as they can. They need to build a house. They've heard what Jesus said. That's great, but I'm building a house, and they just get it built. It looks good. It's a house. It's fine. Bible doesn't tell us it's a bad house. Bible doesn't tell us anything rubbish about the house. It's there. Builder two. Builder two decides to build a house. Same again. I'm going to build a house. Listens to what's said. Same as builder one. Yep, listens to what's said. But then listens carefully. Takes on board what is said. Decides to take extra time to build the house. Digs down. And builds a house. And it looks good. Probably at this time, you can't see a difference in the houses. There's two houses. They're they're, they're great. People are able to live in them. And everything's going really, really well. And in that moment, everything's okay. Wonder if that's how we are sometimes in our life. That we do what's needed here and now. It's okay. We can do this. And it's sorted. And it's good. We've got somewhere to live. We've got a house. I'm a Christian, I need to do what I can do today and I'll do it as quick as I can because this is the way it gets done and everything's going to be okay. It looks good. Looks good on the outside. Looks good to people watching. Looks good to those who will ask questions. Just need to build a house and I've built it. It's only when you start to consider long term, when you think further, When you consider the days and weeks and months ahead, that it's different. I wonder how this house will be in a few months' time when the weather changes. I wonder what's going to happen in my Christian life over time as things get difficult. I wonder what it looks like when things aren't as good as they are here and now. As we know from the story, when the rain comes, when the floods come, the house that has good foundations is the house that remains. The other house is washed away. Don't often, lots of us would have done that story as a child, perhaps, or think about children's talks when we think about that story. It's quite a powerful image of what it means about our Christian life. Wonder how deep our foundations are. I imagine for some of us, as we heard Mandy reading this story, we we sat back, it's a nice story, it's a story we know, it's okay, this isn't that challenging. It's about, you know, having a good house and that's okay, I can do that. But I wonder if we then start to think about what the words mean. You see, Jesus didn't say that it's those who confess Christianity. Jesus didn't say those who love me. Those are important. Jesus says the difference in the two houses is the fact of the one who listens to my words and then puts them into action. And there might be the case for you. I know it is for me. There are times when I hear Jesus' words and I think, yep, so glad I'm a Christian. I get that. Love it. Love everyone. But if everyone's loving everyone, I get lots of love. This is good. This is a good thing to be doing. I can do this. I can know God's peace. That's a good thing. His peace that goes beyond understanding. God will protect me. That's a good thing. I'm liking that. I wonder sometimes if we think about the um, builder building and listening to Jesus' words and putting it into action, if we become a little bit um, pick and choose the bits that we like. It comes a little bit like a pick and mix where we decide, yep, I like that one, I like that one. I'm not sure about these ones. How's your house looking? How's it feeling? You might think to yourself, building my house, Jesus said, the people who have a strong house are the people who put my words into action. But how do I know what it is that God is saying? How do I know the things that God wants me to do? Beginning of uh, this year, um, 
no, last year, uh, we were looking at spiritual um, practices and having those regular um, and being intentional about having regular ways that we connect with God. And for some of you, that might be a daily um, part of your daily routine, a daily devotional, maybe about reading a, a Bible passage, stopping and worshiping. Maybe a song of worship that you give time to each day to stop and to worship God. Lots of us will pray regularly. Important to, as we speak to God, we also listen to what God is saying as well. Part of our way of hearing God is by meeting with other Christians. Perhaps being accountable, praying with them, spending time with them, hearing what they would speak into our life. Maybe it's about regularly going for a God walk, setting aside time to go for a walk, maybe every day, maybe once a week, but actually saying, no, I need to put time aside to spend with God. I know some people have a God chair in their house, a place where they will go and they will stop and give time away from everything else. Maybe a space where it's like, I am intentional in my hearing and listening to God. Wonder how we're doing as we think about our foundations. In that passage that um, was read to us, uh, there's two words I just want to look at and think about. The first one is foundation. Jesus is talking about this foundation. What is a foundation? For lots of us, we will know that will make sense. If you think about a house, we'll think about the foundation, the bit that you don't see, the bit that's underground, the bit that is hidden. The bit that um, gets dug out and makes sure that it's a firm and solid place. The Greek word um, is, I practice this, themelio. And it is about a steadfastness, about getting to a place, that foundation, where where it's not going to move. It's about us establishing and making steadfast. It takes time to do those things. It takes effort. In the same parable in the book of Luke, it talks about going down deep. Not just shallow, not just as quick as we can, but making the effort. That foundation isn't reliant on us. That foundation, as we've sung about, is God is our firm foundation. But have we drilled down? Have we dug down? Have we got to a point, each one of us, where we have decided, got to a point where we then build our life on these words, on the firm foundation of Jesus, on the firm foundation of who God is? And then there's the word about what you do then. So uh, in the translation that we read, it talked about putting them into practice, these words. That is just one uh, a singular Greek word. So other translations of the Bible says, whoever does these words. That word is poio. My pronunciation can be corrected later for those of you who know. But for those who don't, it's definitely poio. And this word is used so many times in the New Testament. It's a word which um, is really um, helping people think about that proactive and being active in what they do. That actually it's not just a passive hearing. It's not just a, that feels nice. But over and over again within the New Testament, there's that recognition that we, as we live our lives, there's something for us to do. It, can, it has that um, illustrate and um, that um, the word has the uh, meaning around making and forming, constructing. It's about bringing something to pass. It's causing something to take place. That actually there's something that happens as we listen to Jesus' words and then what we do them. Not learn about them, not hear them, talk about them, read them, but as we do them. It's about performing and executing them. It's about fulfilling them, keeping them, observing them. This is something which is about an activity, an active faith that we have. It's about something that we then live out in our day-to-day lives. 
And I'm sure for lots of us, um, as, we, as you sit there, um, as maybe you're watching online, welcome those people on YouTube. I forgot earlier. Welcome. As we hear these words, we think, yeah, that makes sense. And we can bring back to mind things of like, yeah, that, that is what God says. And this week I've been able to do that. And by God's grace, um, this is something which I'm able to live out each day. And we're able to bring those things to mind. But as busy and active people, I think sometimes that during the week they can just disappear from our minds. They're just gone again. And in the moment we do it, but then they're gone again. I wonder if we are regularly, all the time, building our lives on God's. We sung this morning about the fact that God is always working. God is always loving us. God is always present. He doesn't go to sleep. He doesn't go on holiday. He doesn't have time off. He's always there with us. And for us at times, like I say, we can fade. We, it can slip our minds. Things can, can go from our minds. As we've been sitting here this morning, there's been planes flying over our heads. Don't worry. It happens all the time. It's not anything different. But most of you haven't been aware of it. Okay? Um, this isn't a moment to get your phones out, so don't do it yet. But if you are interested, you can have a look online. And every plane that's flying um, is logged. So this morning at 7.47 a.m., there was a plane traveling over the top of Hunston from Paris through to Reykjavik. Um, and it was on time for those of you who need to know. I don't know if it landed on time because I didn't go back and check. But it was on time at, at 6.47 this morning. And if you have ever used um, such app or looked at SkyTrader to see the planes that are going over and what they are and where they're going and what they're doing, as I looked at that plane this morning, I hadn't been thinking about it since the time it took off from Paris. Even though I wrote it down, I haven't really been thinking about it much this morning as we're doing everything else, and it's now landed. But that plane has gone from Paris to Reykjavik. I think there are times that in the moment you might look up and think, I wonder where that plane's come from, I wonder where that plane's going, and it might interest you, but then it's gone again, as it should. I mean, you try and keep it all in your head if you want to, but it doesn't matter. But I think too often the same happens with God. That in the moment when we're crying out to God in prayer, as he calls us to, as we should, there's a recognition of a God who's there with us. But then very quickly it can fade in the midst of busyness of life or other things happening or, or the world's um, crowding in. And as we think about standing firm, as we think about having good foundations, it's not something that we just pop in and out of. It's something that we do continually. See, God is always there. And as we live our lives, it's not about that pick and mix, about when do we choose to, yeah, we'll, we'll follow that, but we're not going to follow that. We're going to follow that and not that. But as we think about a firm foundation, a house that doesn't fall, we think about the importance of always, continually being with God, following God, doing what he says, listening to his words and putting them into practice. Last week at the mix, um, who was at the mix? Doesn't matter if you weren't, great time. So what I'm about to say, you should think to yourself, I've heard that before, okay? So if you don't, that's okay, but just drag it up maybe. Last week at the mix, um, in the morning celebration, uh, Carolyn spoke to us from Jeremiah 33 and used a story which has been so helpful for me through the week to consider. Carolyn explains that in one community um, of Christians in Africa, that they all had a bush that they would go to to pray. That would be where they'd go and have their regular prayer times. And when you walk um, on the grass, um, if you walk regularly across your garden, um, that piece of grass won't grow. And it was um, these pathways to these bushes that people would take as they regularly walked backwards and forwards be a natural path to the bush. And the bushes that didn't have a natural path to them hadn't been visited very much. Those people hadn't been regularly backwards and forwards to their bush. And as I say, all week I've been, that's been going around my mind. 
And the question that I ask you this morning is how long is your grass? Because as we think about perhaps beginning of new year, maybe for you it's just September. But as you think about continuing in your life with God, growing in God, as you continue about live as you continue to think about living as a Christian, it's about us regularly, not one off, not occasionally, but it's about us regularly connecting with God, being alongside God. Our prayer life, our regular devotion with God, is where we hear God, where we then find out how He wants us to put these things into practice. What does it mean to live each and every day in the way that he's called us to? If we're going to stand firm as Christians, it's about us standing firm in the way that God would have us live. It's not our foundation. We dig down, but we find the words of Jesus. We find God as we build our foundation. So, for each one of us, maybe you feel that the foundations feel strong. Maybe you feel firm at this time. Maybe for you it does feel more wobbly. Maybe as you've been here this morning, maybe as you're watching, it's a case of God just just convicting, God just putting his finger on things in your life. For each one of us to think again, how am I listening to Jesus' words? How am I putting them into practice? And for us to trust that he is always working. So we don't sign off for a few days. We don't don't go offline because things aren't quite as we want them. But we continue. In the Ephesians um, verse that was read, linked to the armor of God, our God suit, our shield of faith, our sword of the spirit. As we think about living each and every day God's ways, Paul says to the Christians there in Ephesus to stand firm. The verse from Psalm, Psalm 18, verse 2. This is my prayer that each one of us would be able to say this about God. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock. In whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. In a minute, we're going to continue, come to a close um, in our celebration together. Um, But as we sing these songs, they aren't an opportunity for us to get ready for tea and coffee or the next part. They're not just a transition moment. But they're opportunity for us each week to respond to what God is saying. And I encourage you uh, this morning that as we um, sing these two songs, just to take a moment to hear what God might be saying to you. How deep are your foundations? What is your house built on? Might look good from the outside. Second question I would ask is, how long is your grass? If we're going to stand firm as we continue to live as a Christian, it's about our foundations. If you want someone to pray with you, um, there'll be opportunity to do that at the end. The only reason we do it at the end, if you try and do it during the songs, people can't hear each other. It's not special at the end. It's a very practical thing. But maybe during these songs, if you want to just come forward because you want someone to pray with you, um, that is fine just to come and sit at the front. You don't have to wait to the end in that way. Don't feel as if you have to sing every word of these songs. But let's make sure we have space to respond to what God is saying. And it might be the words of these songs are songs that you will sing as part of your response. Let me pray and then we'll continue. God, thank you for your word. Thank you um, for these parables that we have that help us to think about how we live as a Christian. God, as we think about um, standing firm, beginning of um, a new term. God, as we come back together uh, regularly in our normal ways. God, I pray that you would continue to put your finger on things in our life. Things that we need to 
perhaps live differently, ways that we need to put things into practice and not just to speak about them or hear them. God, I pray that you'd meet with us, that you'd meet with us now as we spend um, time reflecting and responding to your word. Amen. Please stand if you're able. God, am I living? There am I breathing? God, am I waking? God, am I sleeping? God, am I resting? There am I working? God, am I thinking? God, am I speaking? Be my everything. Be my everything. Be my everything. Be my everything. God in my hoping, there in my dreaming, God in my watching, God in my waiting, God in my laughing, there in my weeping, God in my hurting, God in my healing, be my everything. Be my everything, be my everything, be my everything. Christ in me, Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You are everything. Christ in me, Christ in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory, be my everything, 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 be my everything. Christ in me, Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. You are everything. Christ in me, Christ in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Be my everything. Be my everything. Be my everything. Be my everything. Be my everything, be my everything, be my everything, be my everything, you are 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 everything, Jesus everything, Jesus everything. Everything be my 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 everything
love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice have led me through the fire darkest night you're close like no other i've known you as a father i've known you as a friend i have lived in the goodness of god the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the goodness of God. God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, that God, you don't stop working. You don't fall asleep. You don't have time off. I pray that it will be true that from the moment that we wake up until we lay our head, that we would have our mind towards you. We will be thinking of you. You'll be living the way that you call us to live. Amen. Amen. Please stay for tea and coffee. If you'd like someone to pray with you, please make your way to the front. Um, pray that you know God's blessings with you this week.